गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू दर्ड लेक्चर ऑफ चैप्टर सेवन गेटिंग टू नो प्लांट्स इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी स्टडीड अबाउट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द लीव टूडे वी विल स्टडी अबाउट विनेशन एंड इट्स टाइप्स एंड ऑल्सो द फंक्शन ऑफ द लीव In our previous class, we studied that the midrib on the either side branches out as veins and veinlets to form a network. The arrangement of these veins on the leaf blade or leaf lamina is known as venation. Venation is mainly of two types: reticulate venation and parallel venation. Reticulate venation is the venation in which veins form a net-like pattern on both sides of the midrib. It is mostly present in plants having taproot system. The second type of venation is known as the parallel venation. In this, the veins run parallel to the midrib or parallel to each other. It is present in plants with fibrous root system. you can very easily observe this venation for this collect few different types of leaves and put them under a white sheet of paper hold the leaf in place with your hand now hold a colored pencil or crayon sideways and rub it on the portion of the paper having the leaf below it you will get an impression of some lines in it now notice this impression and you will observe that this impression is of the veins observe this pattern carefully you will observe that it is either network like pattern or it is the parallel venation pattern now we can easily differentiate between parallel venation and reticulate venation so parallel venation is the venation in which the veins either run parallel to the midrib or parallel to each other whereas the reticulate venation is the venation in which the veins form a net like pattern on the lamina on both sides of the midrib venation is present in plant monocotyledonous plants having fibrous root system and reticulate venation is found in dicotyledonous plants having the tap root system i hope you remember monocots and dicots from your previous classes monocots are the plants in which the seed bears only one cotyledon like maize whereas dicotyledonous plants are the plants in which the seeds they bear two cotyledons like that of rajma you can observe parallel venation in plants like bamboo banana wheat grass and sugarcane and reticulate venation in plants like banyan hibiscus rose mustard lemon etc now we have already discussed the two types of root systems and the two types of venations but is it possible for you to guess what type of root system a plant is having without digging it is it possible to tell this by looking at the venation yes it is very easy the leaf venation and the type of root system in the plant are related to each other the plants with reticulate venation in their leaves always have tap root system whereas those having parallel venation always have fibrous root system always remember that now let us discuss functions of the leaves the first and the most important function of leaf is manufacture of food plants prepare their food in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll with the help of water minerals and carbon dioxide by the process known as photosynthesis the chlorophyll present in the leaves traps the solar energy and helps in fixing carbon dioxide water and minerals into food that is glucose which is stored in the leaf in the form of starch almost all the living organisms they are dependent directly or indirectly on the plants for obtaining their food 
the second function of leaves is exchange of gases in leaves some tiny openings are present on the under surface these tiny openings are known as stomata exchange of gases takes place through stomata during photosynthesis carbon dioxide enters the leaves and oxygen is given out through stomata whereas during respiration oxygen enters the leaves and carbon dioxide is given out through the stomatal openings next function of the leaves is transpiration plants absorb a lot of water from the soil but very little water is used up in photosynthesis the rest of the water is lost to the atmosphere in the form of water vapors through stomata this loss of water through stomata is known as transpiration transpiration is very important for the plants as it helps in cooling the plant body and maintaining its temperature secondly it also helps in getting rid of excess water and conduction of water and minerals by creating an upward pull in some plants like pea masoor lily etc the stems are quite weak to stand erect in such plants the leaves or the leaflets are sometimes modified to produce leaf tendrils the leaf tendrils coil themselves around some support and help the weak stemmed plants to climb up to expose their leaves to the sunlight in desert plants like cactus the leaves are modified into spines not only for defense but also to reduce the loss of water through transpiration and helps in conservation of water function of the leaf is that they also help in reproduction in some plants like bryophyllum buds develop in the margin of the leaves these buds grow as new plants and help in reproduction in the previous slide we studied that the leaves they carry out the process of photosynthesis during which carbon dioxide and water they are fixed with the help of solar energy and chlorophyll to form glucose as the food the excess of the glucose is converted into starch and stored in the leaves as plant food that is why green leaves they are also known as the food factories or kitchen of the plant now let us perform an activity to show that green leaves they produce starch during the process of photosynthesis for this we take the green leaf and boil it in water for about 10 minutes now take out the leaf from the water and put it in a test tube containing spirit or alcohol this test tube in a beaker half filled with water and heat the beaker till the color from the leaf comes out into the test tube this process of removing green color from the leaf is known as bleaching now take out this bleached or decolorized or a chlorophyllous leaf from the test tube and wash it in water put the leaf in the petri dish and pour a few drops of iodine solution over it and wait for a few minutes you will observe that the color of the leaf it now starts changing to blue black the blue black coloration of the leaf on addition of iodine solution indicates the presence of starch in it it is because the leaf synthesizes food and stores it in the form of starch when iodine solution is added to starch it becomes blue black in color now you must be curious about the bleaching process that why we have added alcohol to the leaf why we have taken out the chlorophyll from the leaf reason is that the green color of the chlorophyll interferes with the starch iodine test so to get the better results we always use alcohol to bleach the leaf while studying the functions of the leaf 
we studied that the plant gives off excess water through the stomata by the process of transpiration. Now let us perform an activity to demonstrate that water is given off during transpiration. For this activity, we take a healthy potted plant and keep it in direct sunlight. We enclose a leafy branch of this plant in a transparent polythene bag and tie its mouth as shown in the figure. Now we keep this plant in the sunlight for a few hours. After a few hours, we observe the inner surface of the polythene bag. We observe tiny water droplets on the inner surface of the polythene bag. The leaves release water vapors by the process of transpiration. These water vapors, when touch the inner surface of the polythene bag, they turn into tiny droplets of water by the process of condensation. Thus, this activity demonstrates that transpiration occurs in leaves of the plant. That's all for today students. In the next lecture we will study about the most attractive part of the plant that is the flower.